on this latest criticism of Trump and how it might shape the race, or it may not. I'm joined by P.J. Crowley. He's a former spokesperson for the U.S. State Department. Uh, P.J., so much to ask you. Thanks for being here. Pleasure. Uh, so first of all, uh, is this the kind of person who can be a commander in chief and make critical decisions about war, conflict, diplomacy, your thoughts? Well, that's what a campaign is all about. There's always a point during a presidential campaign where the American people will make that judgment. Is this person, you know, commander in chief material? If you go back to the 2008 campaign, you know, what will happen with this person gets the three o'clock, you know, phone conversation. So uh, that's what the campaign is all about. And the American people will have the chance to make that decision if Donald Trump is the Republican nominee. Do you think Romney's words will make any impact among people who support Donald Trump? Well, I, I'm sure, I'm sure that you know, there will have impact, uh, but whether, there's a, you know, whether there is an alternative here, again, that is something that we'll probably see in the next you know, couple of weeks. We may even see in the next couple of hours you know, a debate tonight, obviously. You know, Trump has made so many different kinds of tough rhetoric and comments about Iran, about Syria, the war on terror, Iraq, China, immigration. Is there anything in particular that stands out in your mind as, oh, not a bad idea, and it's doable. Well, I mean, there are a lot of caveats here. You know, obviously, you know, first, you know, when you're on a presidential campaign, there are no constraints. You know, and and you know, when you move from campaigning, you know, to governing, uh, you know, one thing is, uh, you know, the the one thing that has been the signature moment that gave him some political traction is the question of the wall, and he's not going to be able to force, you know, Mexico. You know, to pay for his wall. An another aspect is he said, well, I I'll bring back torture. You know, no intelligence agency is going to pay attention to him unless there's a legal judgment that says he can do that, and torture is against U.S. law. So there, there are some things that he's talking about that he won't be able to do. You know, that said, in the last debate, he said, you know, if you're going into a negotiation such as between Israel and, and Palestine, you have to be neutral. You know, he, he, he has a point there, you know, to which Ted Cruz responded, well, if I'm president, I'm going to move the American embassy to Jerusalem, which would be probably a, a very significant negative factor in any future negotiation. PJ, he has offended so many different people, women, Mexicans, Muslims. What is it about this man, besides the fact that he's saying we can make America great again, and he's anti-establishment. What is it about him that is appealing to his supporters? Well, I think he, I think he taps into a genuine fear that you have within the country, economic uncertainty, and a sense among a percentage of the electorate that they've been left behind. You know, um, that said, uh, obviously, I think that that were he to be the Republican nominee, uh, you would see you know some evolution you know in his rhetoric as you go towards. You know, November. Now he, you know, he says, "Well, you know, I, I'll tear up all these trade deals. Those are difficult to do. You know, he may rail against the Iran deal, but he would have to convince six other major powers, you know, to change their policies. Uh, you know, to to rip up the deal. He's not going to be able to do that. So, uh, you know, we we have to take what he's saying right now, you know, with a significant grain of salt." Uh, you've worked in the previous administration. You are a man of experience. You know politics. Have you ever seen a race like this before? Not in my lifetime. All right. We'll leave it at that one, because that's a really good answer. I haven't either, and I don't have the same kind of experience you do in the government. Uh, let me ask you about um, the military. Can Donald Trump get the respect of military leaders if he's elected? Well, um, we live in a constitutional democracy. I I'm a retired military officer, and, and we will salute uh, and support whoever the president of the United States is. Um, you know, respect is kind of a different issue, uh, but um, you know, we'll are do. Are they obligated to obey his orders? Yes, they are, and 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 they will. Um, I, I mean, I, I think we we have to understand that. I don't know at this time if if, if Trump has any foreign policy advisors, and he's receiving that was any, my next any any realistic advice at this right. point. I think he's saying a lot of things are just popping into his head. Uh, you know, were he to be the nominee, were he to form an actual team around him, I, I, I have to believe that 
you know, the tenor of, of his com rhetoric on foreign policy you know, will change. I, I think it's important for people to understand that, you know, I mean, a, a president can do meaningful things. I mean, we're still dealing with uh, decisions that were made by George W. Bush, still dealing with decisions and will you know, be mm -hmm. dealing with decisions made by Barack Obama. So a president can have a very significant stamp on foreign policy, obviously, but by the same token, most of foreign policy, there's continuity here. You know, foreign policy is driven by American interests and they're not driven by personality. PJ Crowley, so much to talk about. Thank you so much for coming on board. A pleasure.